and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, so much attention gets placed on the pre-emerge herbicides for soybeans that today we wanted to shift a little bit and talk about the pre-emerge options for corn and what you should be using on your farm. We also want to give you a little 2016 year in review. We'll talk about some of the good, some of the bad, and some of the things you might want to watch for going into 2017. Now, one of the bad is definitely that there's still some of our weed of the week giving people fits. We'll show you how to get this tough weed under control, but first, here's our farm basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about soil life. It's not just plants in the soil, there are all kinds of things from earthworms, bacteria, the fungi that are in the ground. Are some of those things harmful to plants? Are they beneficial to plants? We want to talk about that a little bit today. When you think about soil, it's a whole lot more than just dirt. There's lots and lots of living things. In fact, uh, many estimates have it that in just a handful of soil, there's more than a billion living organisms. Well, that's incredible. And when we think about managing the soil, it's not just about keeping dirt in place and in a field or in a garden. It's about all those little living things in there and what they are doing for our crops. All right, so let's get specific here. We'll talk first about earthworms. One of the things that we had heard 25 years ago when we started doing some no-till work on our farms is, oh, the earthworms are going to be great for you. And you know what? What we did and what we, what we saw some other people doing too is just uh, taking little boxes with glass in the front, having soil there, and laying residue on top. Well, after just a few days, the earthworms had gone to the soil surface, taken residue, and pulled it down below the soil surface. Well, what good does that do? A, a couple of things. Number one, those earthworm channels give a nice, nice path for roots to go down. They give a nice path for water to flow down too. So overall that soil has a little bit better porosity. That's great. But in addition to that, when they pull some of that residue down, well, that residue now gets way below the soil surface. And when it breaks down below the soil surface, that's a good thing. Because as we get breakdown of the residue, there are nutrients released for those roots that are growing. So there are many good things that earthworms do. In addition to earthworm castings have a certain amount of N, P, and K in them. So they are also fertilizing our soil. Now, the other thing is we've got not just earthworms, we've also got things like fungi out there. And when you think about a fungus, many times it's a negative connotation. Oh, there's a fungus growing on the loaf of bread in my house or, or on you know, some kind of produce or whatnot. Fungus can be a good thing too. And in fact, to get nutrients like phosphorus into plant roots, they'll rely on a certain fungi species to move it in. All right, that fungi that Darren's talking about, that's mycorrhiza. And that mycorrhiza is incredibly important because what ends up happening in soil is roots are trying to move out and pick up any nutrients. But number one, some of the nutrients aren't available. Number two, sometimes the amount of space that a root needs to go into, it's too small a space. It can't get in there, but a little, a little chain of fungi can get in there. So this all happens in the soil where these mycorrhiza fungi can actually take nutrients that aren't really available for the plant. They can turn it into a form the plant can use and send it into the roots. It's an awesome deal for the plant. So how do you improve soil life? How do you improve the number of bacteria, fungi, and other things that are living in your soil? And that are beneficial, not harmful. Well, one of the big things is just drainage. If you've got a soil that floods out all the time, well, hey, that water fills up every airspace in the soil and all the aerobic uh, soil life dies. So if you can have good drainage so you don't have those flooding type situations, that's a big thing, or just water at in excess, if you can eliminate that. The other thing is just having a growing plant out in the field as long as possible. Now in some areas, harvest happens earlier and we're seeing farmers use things like cover crops to provide a living plant out in the field for a longer part of the season. So farmers are definitely trying to manage for the soil life 
uh, that's out there in their fields. In terms of managing for soil life too, it's also about having a diverse crop species if you can. So let me just give you a quick example. Radishes don't support mycorrhiza fungi. So Darren just mentioned cover crops. Well, radish should be a cover crop, but if all you had was radishes, the mycorrhiza fungi are going to die. That's going to be a bad thing for phosphorus availability in your crop the next year. So by having radishes along with, let's say, some rye or some soybeans or you know a number of different other cover crops, you can do a good job supporting many different types of soil life. Well, keeping things alive in your soil is very important, but keeping weeds dead can be too. If you want to get maximum yield, we'll show you how to stop this weed in its tracks coming up later in the show. For lower costs, higher production, Mandico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique Coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable Coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mandico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, we'd be blushing. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. We raise corn, beans, and then uh, about 7,500 head of hogs a year. About uh, 800 acres of beans this year. All 800 are Liberty Link this year. Our biggest weed pressure is definitely the water hemp. That's why we switched to Liberty Link. We were Roundup ready, and uh, we had some resistance. I got sprayed three times one year that didn't even come close to killing them. So the next year we. Switched Liberty Link thinking we'd switch back and forth every year and Liberty Link performed so well we never switched back. We have a test plot that had Roundup and Liberty Link right next to each other and the Liberty Link out yielded it in the past five years. It's very important to have good weed control. For one, it just looks better to look at a nice clean field, but yield-wise it's also very important. The Liberty Link system, a simply better solution. Now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. When I first became a full-time agronomist, we had two choices for corn pre-emerge herbicides, dual or eradicane, that was pretty much it. Today, it feels to me like we have a million choices out there. There are lots of companies that sell corn pre-emerge herbicides, and then to top it off, there are all these different premixes, so it gets really confusing, and that's why we wanted to talk about corn pre-emerge herbicides today. But let's start with saying this. There are basically a couple of questions you've got to ask yourself. Number one, am I more concerned about killing grass than broadleaves? And number two, am I trying to kill everything with my pre, or am I just setting up for a good post program to finish off the weeds that way? Well, number two there, Brian, uh, am I setting up for a post program has been the reason that the pre's have had a little bit less focus uh, over the last 15 years or so. And here's what's going on. When we use those pre-emerge herbicides, we had conventional corn. 
and so we didn't have very good grass products that we could use post-emerge. So we would put a lot of focus into, we have to have great grass control in corn, otherwise we don't have anything to control at post-emerge other than maybe cultivation out in the field. Then we got Accent, and okay, at least we have an option that we can use post, but it's kind of expensive. All of a sudden, here we go with Roundup Ready Corn. And when you can spray Roundup post-emerge and kill grass, we can do it with a low rate, it doesn't cost much money. Now many farmers are thinking, well, I really don't have to worry so much about that pre-emerge grass control. Then we have Roundup resistant broadleaf weeds and now we need that broadleaf component in there for the pre. You know, we're just all over the board here on what's going on with corn. Here's what I look at. What is it going to take for me to get the most yield in my field? With corn, a lot of that early crop growth is where the yield is determined. So we've got to have great weed control early in the season. Don't skip the pre. Now let's get back to Brian's first question. Do I need grass control or is broadleaf control more important? Okay, if you're in conventional corn, you need the grass control. Absolutely no question. You have to use a full rate of Surpass, Harness, Outlook, or Dual. Otherwise, don't raise conventional corn. I'm that dead serious about it. You have to have great grass control, okay? Because post-emerge, Accent's really your only option. It's expensive. It's not that great a product anyway. It's an ALS herbicide. I don't like it. But that's your only choice post-emerge. So use that straight pre grass product, Harness Surpass Outlook Dual at the full rate. Okay, let's say you've got Roundup corn or Liberty Link corn. Well, now you've got the post-emerge side covered for, for grass control and it's not gonna cost all that much money, especially if it's Roundup. So now you can focus on, all right, I gotta get great broadleaf control. And let's remember, well, Harness Surpass Outlook and Dual are great products on grass. They are not great products on broadleafs. They're okay, but they're not great. So that's where I'd start looking at some other type of premix, possibly a Triple Flex, Sure Start, Resicor. Uh, you've got Verdict out there, uh, Corvus, number of different options. So with these combination products, we've got normally a cut rate of a grass pre-emerge herbicide, and we've got generally a full rate of a broadleaf herbicide in there. Like with Sure Start, Triple Flex, we've got Hornet in there. Or with Resicor, we've got some Stinger, but we've also got mesotrione in there, which is the active ingredient in Callisto. Uh, so we've got some good products that we can use. It really comes down to what you have for a weed spectrum out in your fields. All right, some people say, well, I don't want to use anything that contains dicamba post-emerge because I want to plant dicamba soybeans. All right, that's fine. So now you're pretty much left with an HVPD post, which tells me I'm not going to use an HVPD pre. So now Corvus is out, Resicor is out. Now I'm kind of left with, hey, Verdict would be a great option. Otherwise, Sure Start or Triple Flex would be fine too. So it all depends on what you want to run with for your post product. That's going to help route you into the correct pre. The big key is don't use that same mode of action post that you have used pre. That's where weed resistance really starts to build up. The other thing is you definitely have to look at the prices of all these options this year because things are changing and things that we thought, wow, it's really too expensive last year. Now all of a sudden this year it's cheaper. As products go off patent, we get a lot of generic competition and, and that's really impacting the prices that we're paying at the farm gate. So make sure you're looking at, at all the different options that you have and it may be something different that you use this year versus last year just due to price. Well, fortunately, a lot of these herbicides are just a little bit cheaper and that's good news when it comes to controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. My dad and I share the operation is about three quarters seed beans for Stein. That's how we really got in with Stein, and then we just started planting Stein corn, and, and now we're 100% Stein. I just like the relationship of uh, uh, having the connection more, more with Stein and knowing what's going on. And you're going to just kind of have to decide what you think works for you. And Stein's worked real well for us, real well. I choose Stein because Stein has you. Sometimes getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head to head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. 
Time to send in the A-Team. AgroLiquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient-balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. I love the fact that we get very little grain loss from the head. Other brands, other corn heads, we've seen that um, up to three, four bushel per acre in some instances where we have some dry corn. We're growing as much corn as we can. We don't want to be leaving this out in the field at harvest time. So the fellow's done a nice job of making sure we're capturing almost every kernel that we can. So yes, I would recommend the fellow head to other farmers. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. We're going to spend a few minutes today talking about a 2016 year in review, but this is something we encourage you to do on your farm. Really review everything you did in 2016. What can you learn from that and how can you make improvements going into 2017? All right, let's start with seed treatments. There are a lot of new seed treatments out there for sudden death syndrome, for yep. uh, nematode control. Also looking at things like uh, biological products that can help improve root growth and, and just plant yield overall. Well, here's the whole thing in 2016. What we learned from a lot of those new trials is not much because sudden death wasn't as bad. Cis nematode didn't seem to be as bad. Uh, some of the seed treatments didn't perform as, as well as they had in prior years because in many areas where the trials were being run, there was amazing weather. So that kind of took over and we didn't have all the stress that we normally do. Well, it's just like we always say, if you only have one stress in the field, it doesn't hurt you much. So if your only stress is cis nematode and everything else is perfect, well, it's not nearly as big a deal. All right, the other thing is just looking at the average over a period of years and making your seed treatment decisions. Yeah, if you had a 10 bushel gain one year and a two bushel gain the next, uh, all right, well, if two doesn't pay, yep. but 10 pays really, really well, look at over a period of years what the average we is. We still think these are some nice tools and good new products, things like Olivo, for example. All right, how about weed control? Because we see a lot more resistant weeds out there. Yeah, but you know what? I, I, I drove in so many different states in 2016 and I saw pretty decent weed control in a lot of fields. Now, certainly not perfect, but here's, here's the big key. Use good pre-emerge herbicides and multiple modes of action pre. That really worked in 2016. I mean, it was amazing. But kill the weeds in your ditches and fence lines. That was horrible in 2016, and it was the worst I've ever seen in my life. So kill the weeds in your fence lines and ditches. That'll help reduce the weed pressure in your field. Yeah, the other thing is just crop canopy. If we didn't have great crop canopy this year, we saw a lot of late season weed breaks in certain areas. So do everything you can to have a good crop canopy in your fields. All right, how about bugs, Brian? Because a lot it was of a guys- a low bug pressure year. A lot of guys went with less traits this year, especially in yep. corn and got by with it in many cases. Well, in some cases, but there were some really good yields and there were some downfalls. Some guys had lodging problems. Some guys didn't get the yield they thought, especially when we talk continuous corn, you need the rootworm trait and the BT post-emerge, or BT foliar, it doesn't cost much, so I think that's still a pretty good way to go. One of the things that stood out to me, I was in Illinois in September, and guys that sprayed a late foliar application of fungicide in corn, not just at tassel time, but another one even later, picked up another 20 or 30 bushels this year, basically due to late season gray leaf spot uh, well, showing up in corn. Yeah, just when we talk about that disease thing in general, I would say this. 
fungicide prices came way down. Even so, we didn't see as many people spray fungicide as we thought would. When it's dirt cheap, when it's three to five dollars an acre, why are you not spraying fungicide? That's what I don't get. So I would really encourage you to take a look going into 2017. There's some inexpensive options that are excellent and this year you missed out on some yield if you didn't get those diseases under control. All right, fertilizer prices came back down a little a bit, lot. Brian. Uh, what a else lot. did you see change in fertilizer? Well, the big thing is more people are soil testing, more people are doing plant tissue analysis, and that's the key. If you have data, you can make better decisions with your fertilizer dollar. Well, lots of things happened in 2016. You gotta learn from those lessons to make 2017 even better. One last thing I guess I'd say, tile really paid in 2016. We talked to a lot of farmers that put tile on the ground, it paid off in one year because there were a lot of big rains in a lot of areas in the United States. Well, one thing that pays off every year is getting our Weed of the Week under control. We'll show you how to do just that coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Duo herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is shatter cane. It's funny, I just had a farmer I was talking to the other day that was all concerned about shatter cane uh, for some of his neighbors. And I said, hey, I'm not too worried about shatter cane anymore. We have so many great ways to control this. Where this was really a problem was 25, 30 years ago before Accent came out, before Beacon came out. Well, in corn, in a grass crop, it's difficult to take a grass out of there like shatter cane. So it was awesome having Accent and Beacon post-emerge, but today we've got Roundup, we've got Liberty, we have so many choices. Well, one of the big things about this weed is it oftentimes comes up late. We look at it as a summer annual weed. So when you've got things that pop up later in the season, those pre's oftentimes have run out of gas by that point. So we have to rely on those post-emerge options. Yeah, the pre's were never gr that great anyway. I mean, you look at dual, harness, surpass, outlook, those would be the best things in corn, but they're suppression only, that's it. So that's why you, I mean, don't get me wrong, We'd still like to have those down, but you, you want to get good control post-emerge. The key here is spray when the shatter cane is small. If you're trying to kill six inch tall, 12 inch tall shatter cane, it's going to be a lot more difficult than if that shatter cane is two, or two to four inches. All right, now in soybeans, the pre's are pretty effective. Things like yep. Treflan and Sonlan do a nice job. And Prowl. Uh, any, any of those are just fine. That's what we would recommend. Then post-emerge, Roundup's great. Uh, otherwise, Liberty is excellent. And then, of course, you have choices like Clethodum, Select Max, Assure, uh, lots of different options there for grass control in soybeans, but soybeans are a broadleaf crop. Now in wheat, uh, that wheat is seeded so much earlier than when the shatter cane's emerging. We can get a good canopy Typically. and choke it out. Yep. If you do have some, a lot of times Axial can pick it up. Yeah, pre-emerge, you can certainly use prepare, but if it's ALS resistant, well, then prepare is going to be out. And that's the same thing that we talk about in conventional corn. Hey, if you've got ALS resistant shatter cane, maybe conventional corn isn't the best way for you to go. You should use Roundup Ready corn or Liberty Link corn. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit copperheadag.com. 
Looking for a solution that will grow your returns on every acre? Farmer's Edge offers the most complete package, including hardware, software, variable rate technology services, soil sampling, and unbeatable support, all for only $3.95 an acre. Grow more precisely with Farmer's Edge. To get a special offer from Farmer's Edge, visit GrowYourReturns.com. That's GrowYourReturns.com. Grow your returns for only $3.95 an acre with Farmer's Edge. Can you afford not to? Side dressing nitrogen? Applying nitrogen over the row boosts nitrogen uptake and efficiency. 360 Y Drop places nitrogen at the base of the plant, not like Coulter systems that put it down the center of the row. With Y Drop, a small amount of moisture moves nitrogen into the root zone for rapid uptake. Getting more bushels out of your nitrogen investment is important. 360 Y Drop lets you apply nitrogen later in the season so you know exactly how much N is needed to finish the crop strong. Learn more at 360yieldcenter.com. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. Introducing the Soilmax ZD48, the newest addition to the Soilmax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The Soilmax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. If you're handling bulk crop protection products, one of the last things you want to see is a leak. On today's Iron Talk, we'll identify a change that may make a big difference for your farm. We purchase many of the crop protection products for our farm in bulk. There are fewer containers to rinse, clean, and recycle. You may save a trip or two back to the dealer for more product. It's almost always considerably cheaper. And the biggest thing may be the convenience of bulk. To do it though, you need to have high quality storage containers and the right equipment to pump the bulk out. One of the key components to that system is having Viton chemical seals on the tanks and on your pump. A mistake that's sometimes made is to use a pump set up to handle diesel fuel. The pump itself may not be all wrong, but the types of seals used to withstand diesel fuel are completely different than the Viton seals needed to hold up to the various crop protection products that you may be using on your farm. One other tip is to thoroughly clean your tanks and pumps as soon as you're done using them for the season. Not only does this prevent buildup, but it lessens the time your seals are in contact with the crop protection products and extends the life of Viton seals. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, that's our time for today, and we certainly hope you join us again next week for another Ag PhD. In the meantime, tune into Ag PhD Radio. We've got our live daily radio show that airs on Sirius XM Channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We've got another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. 
I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.